behalf of the family, let me say thank you very much to the friends who have gathered here today to remember Jerry Dwyer as they inter his earthly remains. To the family, on behalf of the friends, I would like to say that we are here to support you. We're here to lift you up. And we want to hold your hand and let you cry on our shoulders. We want you to tell us stories about Jerry that we can laugh with and cry with and be there for you. And we just want you to know that we want to support you in every way that we possibly can. Please lean on us. There's so many things that could be said about our brother Jerry. And just a week ago we were able to gather in his home congregation and talk about some of those things. So today I would just like to read a few scriptures and then have a prayer. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In this psalm, David moves from the pasture to the palace, from the wilderness to the home. And that's exactly what Jerry has done. He's moved from pasture to palace, from his life here in this wilderness to the palace with God. And 1 Thessalonians, a reading from the New Testament. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning at verse 13. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with Him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with the cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Would you bow with me, please? Almighty God, sovereign ruler of the universe, creator, judge, deliverer, merciful benefactor, we are so thankful for your Son who died on the cross, whose death, whose sacrifice gives us hope in days like this. Frankly, Father, we are in some ways jealous of our good brother Jerry because he is with you, with your Son, with your Spirit, awaiting the resurrection. We long to be with him again. And Father, as we live through this life, help us to tell others so that they too can be together with us throughout, the end, throughout eternity. Father, thank you for saving our brother by the blood of your son. Thank you for supporting his good wife, for being with his children. We pray that you would bless them and help them rely on you. Through your son Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. On behalf of the United States Navy and my funeral honors team, please accept our sincere condolences for your notes. It's possible, but I don't believe he and I have met. So unlike you, I don't have the privilege of knowing him for who he was. I wish I did. But I think I do understand a little bit about him. See, he and I served in the same Navy. We wore the same uniform, and we saluted and respected the same flag. And there was a time in his life when he decided there was something about his country, his family, his honor, and his freedom that was worth fighting for to preserve. So one day he raised his right hand, and he swore a solemn oath to defend this country against all enemies that would try to take away these precious things. And that simple act of swearing in made a statement to all Americans that I'm on watch. 
And as long as I'm on watch, don't worry about a thing, because I will protect you. In essence, he gave himself to the United States government as a signed blank check. And he said, here, Uncle Sam, take this and keep America free. And he knew that cashing that check could cost him up to and including his very life. And although he did not pay the ultimate price or make the ultimate sacrifice for his country, he did make the ultimate commitment to take the ultimate risk. And for that, America owes him an enormous debt of gratitude. The fact that you were gathered here today to celebrate his life and mourn his passing, and you do so in a free country, means he did his job, and he did it well. And that makes him one of us, part of our Navy family. And like you, we mourn his passing. So thank you for allowing us today to be here with you at this time of sorrow, here in this place of honor, to say goodbye. Fair winds and following seas, to a master chief petty officer, a shipman, and a brother. The rifle team will be firing a volley of three. It will be loud. Please do not let it startle you. And during the rifle volleys and the subsequent playing of taps, I would like to invite all those who have served or are currently serving in any of our armed forces, whether in or out of uniform, to join with us in rendering a final salute. All others, we ask you just place your right hand over your heart. And now for those who are able, would you please rise for rendering military honors.